Man, that was that was such a relaxing, enjoyable run of the Pathless. I hope everyone that was watching definitely kind of enjoyed that run. That was that was awesome. So we do we do have the gunk coming up. Uh, Song of Soil is going to be running that one. And then just to kind of check up on uh, you know a lot of our incentives and everything. So we did hit three thousand dollars. We hit the target, and so we have a new target. And as gamers, we we have to hit them. So we do have a new kind of overall goal of the marathon, and that's at 3,505, if I'm correct. Yep, so the next milestone, Speed Docs does crowd control. That is our next incentive. We are $505 away from that. And then a little man behind the, behind the curtain, I guess you could say, told me that, you know, we may be on track to meet that today. So we should definitely meet that today. But if you don't know what crowd control is, it is kind of like an add-on for a lot of games that add extra effects that, that the Twitch chat can interact with. I don't have too many like examples off the top of my head, but I know like some people do like Super Mario 64, where you can kind of adjust things, hurt people, give them a life in some other games. There's a lot of interactions with various games. But right now, this is kind of the commitment saying, hey, Speed Docs is going to do more crowd control. Uh, the game would be kind of announced down the road, so definitely stick around for that. In terms of other things, the polls that we have here, so Pokemon Pearl is coming up in a little bit. We do have the gunk and then CJ's prize corner, but then Pokemon Pearl is after that. And there are a few uh, polls there for naming a few things. We can name Chimchar, you can name the rival, and you can name the char a character. And so there are a few things. I've been personally voting for Chimchar being named Crunchy. Again, shh, don't help. But there are things where you can name the rival. Currently, Dayman is in the lead for that. And our character is currently in the lead to be named Thickums. And if anyone was around last week, you do know that we did name Yoshi Thickums, and I kind of just stuck around. Looks like, well, we have another opportunity for someone else to be named Thickums. Another target also is Kirby Air Ride. That is tomorrow, if I if I. So yeah, so we are we're, we're coming up on that. So definitely get those donations in.
I love you too, AP. Alright, so quickly, just before we do get into the run of the gunk, I do want to remind everyone that this marathon is for charity. It is for Save the Children. And so if you do want to make a contribution and, and save the children, definitely make a donation. Um, I did explain earlier some of the incentives that we have here for some of the games like Pokemon Pearl coming up and Kirby Air Ride tomorrow. But any donation of any amount is great for, for helping a good cause. So definitely, if you have the means to do it, do it. But I also want to kind of quickly make a reminder that we do have CJ's prize corner coming up. So if someone could do exclamation point prizes in chat, we do have raffles going on. And so donations that you do give um, basically will enter you into certain raffles and everything else. And then there is a way without, if you can't donate, there is a way you could still, you know, enter into these raffles and potentially win something. But with that, I think I am going to go ahead and let us transition over to a few videos and then we'll be getting into the gunk shortly after that. Hello, I hope you're enjoying Speed Doxathon. I'm Zach from Save Data Team, and I'm here to tell you about our channel in this brief intermission. At Save Data Team, we make a lot of stuff, such as video essays breaking down the music in the Legend of Zelda series, to this video essay on the history of the history of world record progression videos, in which I interviewed content creators like the Speed Docs guys themselves to learn how their content gets made. But we also do Let's Plays like our Ace Attorney with an Actual Lawyer series. <laughs> Live. <laughs> like. <laughs> A dog. <laughs> and even this stream where we played Celeste, but our Twitch chat could kill us at any time. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You oh. best. <laughs> so, if anything I said sounds interesting to you, head over to Save Data Team on YouTube and give us a watch. Thanks, and now back to the show. Снарядов нас разбудили ночью. Это были страх и паника, безысходность. All right, we are here with the gunk. I am joined here by Song of Soil. He's going to be our lovely runner today or evening, depending on where you're at. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Song of Soil. Uh, today, I'm going to be running the gunk. Uh, we're going to be doing the any percent category, which is the most ran category. Uh, we only have three runners. Um, so with that, I'm going to kind of just jump into it because there is a lot to explain. So I don't want to waste any time. So we're going to be starting in three, two, one, go. All right. So the beginning of this game is the most stressful part because you get 35 seconds to make it to a certain wall and you have to climb this wall before you get a forced walking animation so you can skip the whole beginning of the game and move on to the ship. Um, we're going to do our best right here. So first of all, I have to jump up this rock, which kind of saves a few seconds. And I have to get up this wall that you're not supposed to get up. Okay, we're good. Oh my god. I was kind of, I was sweating the whole time before this because I was like, that wall is so finicky, but we got across it. So with that, we're going to get into resource gathering. This game has a very small amount of resource gathering as we have come up with the solution that all we need is the first upgrade of the game to actually beat the game in really good time. 
The rest of the upgrades do not save you any time whatsoever due to the fact that you have to go through and collect them. So as you can see, I'm scanning them at first and then I'm absorbing them. So with the scan, there's a bar down below that says next upgrade. Once that bar fills up, I will unlock the first upgrade to my legs, which will allow me to use sprint. So right now you can see that I'm jumping because it's our fastest form of movement until we get our upgrade. So anybody used to Luigi's Haunted Mansion, this is exactly the same type of thing. You get a vacuum and you're just absorbing stuff. Sadly, we're not smacking ghosts around or anything, but we're trying to clear out these piles to bring back the fauna of the planet because the planet is being absorbed by this stuff and it's causing a bunch of gunk to appear. Um, and we're here to stop that. So the basis of the story is you play as a female named Ronnie, and she has a partner named Bex. They're space scavengers who are trying to find power sources to trade in for money for riches. And so we found a power source, an anomaly that appeared on a planet, and we landed there, and Ronnie's adventurous spirit caused her to go on the adventure to uh, figure out what's going on with the planet, whereas Bex's whole thing is that she wants the power source because she wants money. Um, so as we explore the planet, we'll uncover some mysteries on what's going on. Okay, so right there, that's all the minerals that we need. That's all the resource gathering we will get. So in this game, I'm going to be using what they call environmental clipping. Um, as you can see, I'm going to be hopping up walls that you're not supposed to hop up. If the wall registers even a slight slant, um, Ronnie can jump up it. And I spent hours, and I mean literal hours, smashing my face into walls all across this game, figuring out where I could get up, where I couldn't get up. I want to do an experiment first. Some of them are a little finicky, as you can tell. Um, but we were able to drop the run from one hour and 46 minutes down to 54 minutes and 52 seconds. So it's now a sub one hour run with all the clipping that we found and all of the other exploits. So right here, I'm coming across what they call a gunk gate. So with the gunk right here, if I don't clear this out, this gate doesn't disappear. But once it's all gone, it'll get out of my way and I can move on. Now the thing about these gunk gates is not all of them actually need to be absorbed. There's some of them that you can actually clip through because they didn't put in walls in certain areas. So right here, I'm gonna jump in this corner and then I can just hop through. So that just saves me a ton of time instead of having to absorb all of the gunk that was on the right side of me. I can just move on. So in this second area, for anybody who's played like Donkey Kong and knows what like coyote time is, um, the reason I say Donkey Kong is it's like really prevalent there. Um, we just use coyote time at that moment to jump over that gap and then we squeeze between the gunk gate to get into the next area. So right here, I'm going to absorb all of the gunk as fast as I can so we can rebuild the fauna and this becomes the most hated part of the run. Um, there's this thing called the seed that we're going to be picking up and we're going to be leading it into an area later on. Oh, did I really miss some of the gunk? Crazy. Okay. Um, there we go. So with um, all that gone, this seed will grow right here. And we're going to try to lead it to a blue oh, wow. pool that we're going to throw it into. It. Not this one, but another one. Now, the thing is, I had a person come into my chat while I was running this game and go, hey, could you just take that seed to the next area and just skip all of the next area? And I was like, you know, maybe you can. So we tried it out, and it worked. And it saves over a minute of time. The bad thing about this, though, is that this is the... Dumbest trick in the whole, I, I cannot stand it. This seed never wants to get picked up. It gets thrown and bounced off invisible walls all the time, um, just like that. And there's so many parts you have to throw it through that if you mismanage throwing it, you'll completely soft lock the seed and you can't use it anymore. Um, which, so far, the seed is actually being really good to me right now. And I don't know if it's just because of like marathon karma, but it's actually getting picked up when I need it to get picked up. Yeah, this is beautiful right now. Oh my god, I can't even complain. So we're taking this all the way across the land to an area with that's just super covered in gunk that you need an, another seed to uh, activate a mushroom pad to jump on. This, here's the bad part about this trick. If this seed falls in water at any point in time, it'll disappear and I have to do that area no matter what. 
So my goal right here is to skip all of this water um, so I don't manage to throw the seed in there. So we're almost done. We have one more gunk gate to go through. Alright, here we go, here we go. So this is the hardest part of the seed. I have to precisely throw this onto the third ramp. Okay, we're good, we got it. So I just got done with one of the hardest skips in the game because the seed actually wanted to work with me today and not glitch out in my hands. So this is amazing. This is perfect for like showing it off on what happens. So once we're done right here, I'm going to climb onto this fauna right here by clipping onto it, and then I'm gonna jump across the gap, saving myself a couple seconds. I'm gonna glitch the seed out so I can keep it in the cutscene, and are. then immediately throw it, and now I'm done with this area. So as you can see, all this gunk, I would have to go through and absorb, and I just bypassed it by taking that seed from point A to point B. So now that we're done with that, we're moving on to the pumpkin laser. So the glove on your right hand, his name is Pumpkin. You lost your hand in a mining accident, and so you got a replacement that uses the vacuum. With these aliens that we find, we can destroy them and take minerals from them and create a laser upgrade for our, um, our glove. Does it harm enemies? No. It's for puzzles. I know, super underwhelming, but you know. Not all lasers are meant to kill people. So now that we got four, we're gonna do another coyote time skip, which is really finicky, we got it. Oh my God, I'm sweating. Okay, um, that is a very hard jump to do, and I'm so glad we got it. Okay, so I'm trying to bypass the animations. Those yellow lines on the stones represent climbing animations, and if you can skip them, it actually saves you time. So we jump on the rocks to the left of those platforms to save a little bit of time. Woo! Okay, so now we head into the, um, the alien territory where we start looking at all the statues and stuff. So I found a new skip while training for this marathon. Whoa. It involves using this grass, and I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. Looks like we're not the first intelligent life on this rock, after all. I mean, there are structures all over this area. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Yeah. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. people living here. I hope you're sure about the... Okay, we got it. So... That actually saves a lot of time, as we don't have to go all the way around. We can now just jump down here and start scanning and completely skip that area. Um, while going, uh, while training for Estat, I was like, okay, where can I find some skips at? So I just started once again smashing my face against walls for hours until I found one piece of grass that I was able to jump on, and I was like, oh, time save. It works. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing now is we're set down a, a teleporter checkpoint. We're gonna go back to the ship and we're gonna upgrade our glove to get our laser. Ah! I opened up the menu too many times. Ronnie, wait. Teleportation. Um, so now that we have our laser, we can actually start doing the puzzles for the later game. There's gonna be these doors that are locked by yellow um, sensors. We're going to try to shoot, wow. Okay, we're gonna try to shoot them, and it's gonna open the doors. <laughs> Don't do what I did and miss. We are now heading in to the gunk bridge. So, the gunk bridge has a lot of skips, and there's also a couple soft locks, but I do have some things to counteract those soft locks. So, if we do encounter one, it'll only cost me like maybe seven seconds. So that's, that's always a good thing. So I'm gonna open this door, I'm gonna immediately skip this cutscene, and I'm gonna try to destroy all of these, uh, I'm gonna try to destroy these aliens and these gunks within a certain amount of time, so I can get this barrier to instant disappear, which I don't think we're gonna get, maybe. No, we didn't get it. I barely missed that alien throw, otherwise that gate would have immediately vanished. Me and Pumpkin just cleared the gunk around the- So here I'm gonna do some more environmental clipping. There's a small square you can jump on that allows you to get on top of that wheel so you can jump onto that pillar and then move on into the next area. So this is the soft lock point. There's gonna be some rubble that blocks off our path that we usually have to use a bomb to blow up. But I'm going to do a safe strat right here. I'm gonna save. 
And then I'm going to hopefully not soft lock. We didn't soft lock. Woo, we didn't soft lock. You'd love to see it. <laughs> All right, I need some water real quick because I'm in an area where I can stand still for 30 seconds. River comes from. What an awful place. All right, so after this cutscene, we're going to go grab a bomb and we're going to use a bomb as a platform. You're not supposed to do this, but the game allows it if you throw it in a certain area. Well, this way feels promising. Okay, come on, get up there, get up there, come on, come on. Come on! No! Okay, we'll try it again. Got it, okay. So, that is very finicky, as you can tell. It does take a couple jumps to get on top of that rock. Um, there is ways to do a first try, but once again, it's all up on how your hitbox collides with it. Just like this skip right here. So, uh, once again, smashing my face against walls, I found the first out of bounds that actually... We just soft locked. Um, so... I found the first uh, out of bounds that saves time. Um, if we don't soft lock. Oh my god, that's two soft locks in a row. This game hates me right now. This society has stood here for a long time. Okay, let's try this again. Now it's just empty. What a trace of life. Okay, we didn't soft lock. Woo! All right. Um, so this out of bounds actually would have saved us some time. We're still going to save a little bit of time, but it would have saved us a ton of time instead of using the bomb route, which you have to throw three bombs and they all take time to explode. Um, we can just bypass the entire puzzle by going out of bounds and then dropping down on these mushrooms and then we can just absorb the gunk. So once again, I'm going to jump on the fauna so I can get a little head start instead of waiting for the bridge to appear and I can get over. So that was kind of bad that we did lose, we did like soft lock twice. That was like a good 14 second time loss, but we have tons of time to make up for that. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to absorb the gunk so it'll remove the barrier from these uh, levers so I can extend the bridge. I'm gonna skip the cutscenes though so I can try to snipe the plant. Oh, I got it, nice. All right, up the mushroom we go and on to lever two. It takes three levers to fully extend the bridge. I have wanted to find a way to skip this area and I have found ways out of bounds to get on top of the map, but you still can't skip this area. Oh. And I'm waiting for one day for somebody to be like, hey, I skipped the bridge. No. But sadly, nothing yet. Okay, so we have the second lever pulled and now we're heading into the north path, which has a few skips itself, which are gonna be using a lot of environmental clipping and one out of bounds. Wow, okay, well, nice aiming. All right, up the vine we go and into the north path. So this area, we used to use a bomb to blow up the rubble, um, but once again, with that hours of me smashing my face into different ledges, um, I found a skip that saves about 14 seconds. So what it does is you jump off the ledge and you clip into the side of the wall and you're able to bypass this rubble. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna hope to get it. Come on, come on. My expertise is in hauling stuff across the galaxy. Oh, it's going to be finicky today, huh? We still got it. I mean, that was really bad, but we still got it. And now we have the nemesis of mine, what I like to call the invisible wall. I know, I know. Oh my god, we actually got it. So, usually there's an invisible wall. <laughs> there's an invisible wall that blocks you from shooting that um, bomb. My vacuum did not want to absorb that bomb. Hey. Okay, so here's our out of bounds. I'm gonna hit these rocks, and I'm gonna climb up here, and then we're gonna try to jump on top of this ring. Nice. That was a really good clip. And now we head into the final lever, and we're past the gunk bridge, and moving on to the gunk tower. Okay. The gunk close to the pipe seems more hostile, but nothing we can't handle. Try to get this. Okay, so once all that's absorbed, this will be our third lever open. And now the bridge is fully complete. 
Now we head into the most dangerous part of the entire run, as everywhere you step is an enemy. Oh, oh, what's going on? What's going on here? Uh, okay, well that was super weird. Um, <laughs> just got stuck on some invisible ledge. I read that too. So in the next area, everything around you is gunk, and you won't have any healing zones for quite a while. So it's going to be about health management, and as you can tell in this game, there's no health bar. Um, there is, it's that green little bar on the back of your backpack, but good luck telling how much health you actually have left using that thing. So it's, it's more about trying to pay attention to the screen and looking at how much red veins appear so you can bypass some of the gunk without actually having to absorb it. All right, we are now entering Gunk Tower. Is there a good time for some donations? Oh, you are more than welcome to jump in whenever. Cool. Well, we do have two donations, one of them by Quillen, $4, which says, Hey, Song, I'm really enjoying this run of a game I haven't ever heard of. Great job on explaining everything. Oh, my God. Also, thank donation you. tracker is no longer at exactly 3000 so you can all donate again. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that comment. I, I'm doing my best. Um, so I actually am going to explain the world record history of this game during a segment called The Walk of Gunk. Um, it's going to explain how this run came to be because there's only three runners and two of them changed this game to where it is now. And they battled back and forth for world record and it was amazing. They just kept going back and forth and back and forth. So we'll get there soon. So what I'm doing right here is I'm walking on this small pipe, and as you can see, my camera does not like it, and it's gonna allow me to jump out of bounds to get back in bounds to get up the tower quicker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to absorb the skunk as fast as I can while trying to run away from a homicidal blob that's chasing me. But right when I get here, I need to stop, absorb, and then continue. This worked out amazingly. You guys have no idea how hard that is. The blob behind you, if it touches you, it slows your movement down by like 50%, and then the gunk will consume you, and it's an automatic death. You can kill the gunk, but it saves time. I mean, it doesn't save time. It wastes time trying to destroy him instead of just running away from him. We just got a triple bomb? What? That's insane. So a triple bomb is when you destroy all the aliens in one throw, you just, boom, gone. Which just saved me quite a bit of time. So here I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna absorb this gunk, so I don't get chased by four blobs. Outrunning one blob is one thing. Outrunning four blobs is just suicidal. So we're gonna get up this tower, and we're gonna get into an area where I can kinda see, and we're gonna make our way through. And I'm gonna save my health right here, because I need it, because I'm gonna take intentional damage boosting to get to the very end of the tower. So what's gonna happen right here, instead of absorbing it, I'm just gonna blindly run through it because I know where I'm going. Okay, we're here. I know that's kind of crazy, but once you've played the game enough, you kind of understand where you're moving in the gunk, allowing you to save a little bit of time right there. Okay, so here, I'm going to drop down, and I'm going to wait for her to say, off the charts. Okay, so right when that happens, I'm going to drop, and then grab onto this vine, completely bypassing the whole trip down. You just completely plummet, grab on, and go. I thank Mr. Double O for finding that. He drops to a different vine. I drop to that vine. We both choose our vines differently, but it does the same thing. I just feel like mine's a little easier, because his requires jumping on two more walls. Okay, so we're done with the gunk tower, and we're heading into what I like to call Hi, I'm Paul, um, because we're rescuing an alien, <laughs> and he actually starts speaking English and talking to us, becomes our friend, so he's Paul. So I'm going to grab this bomb, and I'm going to hopefully throw it far enough to where the radius, I don't trust that radius. So usually I throw it far enough to where I can blow up the barrier without it throwing again, but I just felt like that was really unsafe in a marathon setting, so I, I changed my mind. <laughs> so in this area, we're going to be using face plant strats, which means I'm going to be falling from certain heights to skip areas, but it's going to result in me face plant. 
This place really did open Okay, up. that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, it's supposed to result in me face planning to save time. That's what was supposed to happen. Um, instead of going all the way around this area, you can just drop. Um, so the bomb wasn't supposed to sink into the barrier, but it did. So, um, that happened. <laughs> okay, so in this area, Double O, another runner, um, found this really cool skip that it's really short, and it solves two bomb puzzles by just jumping over these rocks. I, I was like, I never would have thought about that. I was the guy that ran my face into walls while he was thinking, like, you know, why not just jump over the actual gaps? So, good on him. All right, we are heading into my favorite part of the run, and also, this is where the run takes the biggest turn, as a skip was found called the Lower Mine Skip, where you save upwards of four minutes by jumping onto one mushroom. And I'm gonna hope that I get that skip, because it is the hardest skip to pull off. But this is my favorite area in the run. So what we're doing right here is I need to absorb all of this to unlock a lever to get to this area, what I like to call the invisible mushroom. So we'll get all the gunk in this area. We'll move across. So what you're trying to do too is you're trying to intercept the flying gunk as if you don't catch it in time, it'll start hovering in the air like kind of out of reach and it takes a long time to absorb so by taking the route that i took and still absorbing during like the camera cutscene, you can um save yourself enough time to catch up to all the blobs also sorry for anybody who's motion sickness this game does have a lot of camera twirling so while i'm pulling this lever i'm gonna aim myself up with that yellow dot that was actually a really good aim. I thought that I was going to have to readjust that. I'm pretty impressed. Okay, turn my camera around, shoot another one. And here comes Invisible Mushroom Glitch. So this is another one found by Mr. Double O. What you do is that there's a group of mushrooms in the corner of this room coming up, and some of them didn't render into the game, so they're invisible, but you can jump on them. So right here... All I cared about was the pipe. We did it. Nice. Invisible mushrooms done. And now we're gonna head over this gunk wall, and we're done. Woo! So that's not invisible. That's not lower mine skip. That's just invisible mushroom skip. Um, the lower mine is in the next area, but that is also a really nice time save, upwards of over three minutes. So once again, I'm gonna try to line myself up with that yellow dot. We got it. And doors open, and now we head into the lower mine. There's gonna be one gunk gate between us and the lower mine area, and I have to absorb, a, I have to do this in a certain pattern. There's gonna be two blobs on the ground, three in the air, one on the ground, one in the air, one on the ground, one in the air. If I don't do it in that order, I'll waste a ton of time as the gunk will cycle around the room again. Okay. That's and if I jump in with a donation? Go on ahead. All right, so Rolf, Donated five dollars. Said sorry, sorry, my delay song. I'm here with you. Exclamation point. No reset. <laughs> Oh, I love you, Rolf. Thank you so much for showing up. So the joke is, is that I have more resets than completed runs in this game because I am a freak about my time. And so Rolf comes into my chat and always puts no reset. And then for some reason when he does that, I get like the best runs. Okay, so right here is lower mind skip. This is the hardest skip in the game and the one that saves the most time. So I'm gonna destroy that turret and then I'm going to go around and absorb this gunk in a certain order. And it's gonna allow me to position myself to jump on an object that will spawn in the moment I clear out the gunk. But I have to do it precisely, otherwise I have to reset the checkpoint and do it again. So here we go. I'm gonna line myself up. <gasps> oh boy, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to freak out, but we just got it. Oh my God, first try. Oh. Okay, so that just skipped the entire level of lower mines. And I also missed the door, but I could care less. Oh my god, lower mine skip for sure. I love that. 
I was kind of afraid I was going to repeat that once or twice and waste a couple minutes, but once again, it's the blessing of marathons. What? I've been having the worst two days of running this game, and now it's just like, hey, bud, it's your time to shine. And I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so with that out of the way, we're moving into the elevator. And this elevator has a certain pattern that we're going to do where we need to absorb gunks and destroy turrets so we can get the miasma that appears at the end of every battle to appear next to the buttons. The reason we want them next to the buttons is because the closer the miasma is to the gunk that covers the buttons, the faster it disappears and allows us to move on. So, coming up here in this little slot, there's going to be a, a piece of gunk that's going to hover over, and I'm going to absorb it before it disappears. We're going to smack him with his bomb, destroy him, come over here, and we're going to try to absorb this as fast as we can, as there's going to be a flying gunk that's going to bypass. Beautiful. Instant button. Oh my god, beautiful. Okay. So next one is going to be these turrets first. Absorb this gunk, and then we're gonna move over to the next turret, and we're gonna absorb the gunk in a certain way so it's closer to the um, button. So we'll start at the bottom right here, kind of go towards the middle, then switch over to this side, and then absorb all the way over. Oh, where did it go? What's going on? Oh, it's, look at that, invisible gunk, love it. Oh well, it's all right. Here's elevator skip. If you jump right at the top of the uh, elevator, it'll give you a momentum boost in the air, allowing you to get over that door and skip into this. It's not coming from a natural. Um, this is my love letter to this game. The skip I found in this area, I like to call faceplant skipping. It completely bypasses the drill and allows you to abuse saving to skip areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass this cutscene and I'm going to wait for her to say, no, don't unplug things, and I'm going to drop down and save my game. There we go. Oh, oh, no, get out of the camera. Okay, and now we're gonna fall. Oh. Woo, we did it. Okay, so that's face plant skipping. We're all the way down to the bottom of the pit now. No need to do the entire area. No need to pull any levers. No need to fight enemies. You just save warp yourself all the way down. And then we absorb this gunk so we can get into the boss area. I don't like to call these guys bosses. I guess I can call them mini bosses is a better way of putting it. So we're gonna drop this vine and then there's gonna be an enemy at the very bottom that we need to destroy. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. We're gonna stand in front of this rock. Absorb him in the back. Shoot him in the butt for good luck. Oh, 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 okay, you, 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 he didn't want to charge. I don't know what's going on, that has never happened. I didn't even know we could cancel his charge out. So, that was weird. Well, we learned something today. He can cancel his charge if he wants. Um, I think he's toying with me. This is this is the marathon karma that I was looking for. Yeah, this is this is just a complete toy right now. He just is messing with me. Come on. I don't think I've ever done it that bad. That was um pretty pretty bad. Uh, I think I wasted a whole minute on him. You're supposed to let him run into the rock three times, but yeah. Anyways, so after that's over, we saved Paul, and Paul is now with Bex, and he's going to tell us on how to unlock these doors so we can get into the next areas, which we're now into the final parts of the run, which includes the garden. Um, this is where I'm going to start explaining the world record history after we're done with the garden. So... Right here, I'm going to use my uh, vacuum to turn this pedestal, wait for it to blow up, and then throw the seed in here to grow mushrooms. So we have another whole area skip coming up. 
Okay, mushroom. I see how it is. Didn't want to have collision, huh? All right. I see you. I see you. Um, <laughs> the next area is a whole nother skip. There's a vine that hangs down, and to explain this is that in areas coming up, we're gonna have a lot of vines that we need to climb up, and they're just kind of either out of reach, or you need to kill enemies to be able to grow like a mushroom to grab onto them. But for some reason, their actual hitbox hangs way lower than the actual vine itself. And even though the there vine doesn't look active, bridge. you can still grab onto it. So it's place? collision and it's hitbox are all super wonky. So we're gonna, right there. So technically you're supposed to kill all the enemies before grabbing onto that, but it still works and it allows us to bypass. And now we have another giant um, skip that Double O found where you position your gun into the wall and you can actually shoot these lasers and bypass this entire area. So you're supposed to go left and right into those paths to um, get the gates out of the way. But if you swing your gun, oh, it didn't work. But if you swing your gun just right, you can just do that and then it completely opens the gate for you and you're ready to move on. That used to be like a five to six minute section because in both of the rooms to the left and right are a bunch of puzzles. But yeah, collision doesn't exist. Where does this nasty gunk fit into all of this? Alright, we are moving into the garden. This is the final part of the game. Technically, it is it is the final part of the game, but it's not the final part of the game. We'll be coming back here, but this is like your preview to the final part of the game. Welcome to the garden number one, I guess is what we're going to call it. It gives you like a... Um, a preview of what you're going to be doing later and it kind of lets you see what the inside of the building's like but it doesn't give you the access to the other parts of the building so you'll see like where all the puzzles are what they look like which i thought was really cool foreshadowing in the game um because as someone who first visits the garden you're like okay what's coming up next they actually give you a whole like um pretty much exhibit of what's coming up this place seems to be so this door that I have in front of me has three um, levers I have to shoot, opening it up and allowing us to get into what I like to call the bickering part, where these two, Bex and um, Ronnie, will start fighting with each other, and they ride up an elevator for like three minutes. So instead of listening to them bicker, I'm going to kind of explain how this game came to be, as in uh, the speedrun, and how uh, it got developed from a 146 to a 54, um, talking about all the runners and all the clips and how they were found, since we have plenty of time to discuss it. So in this area, I'm going to be making my way through, and I need to get past those red doors in front of me, hmm. the little red bar barriers. Oh, the There's a lever like behind it that removes a gate that blocks off a button that, that, that when we shoot, raises the middle of the tower so we can go all the way to the top so we can meet the gardener, which is the final boss. We're only meeting him. We're not fighting him yet. I would have considered it beautiful. So in these areas, there's actually a few skips that we're going to be doing, small ones. So this uh, yellow lever, I mean lever, ledge, you're not supposed to be able to jump because we're in a forced walking animation, but if you wiggle and mass jump, she'll actually go up there for some reason, saving you a couple seconds instead of having to wait for you to get control of your character again. And in this room, we have another lever that forces your camera in a weird angle. But if you know where you're walking, you can start making your way through the tunnel before the camera gives you control back. So I'm going to sneak into the tunnel behind me, and I'm just going to wiggle. And boom, we're already almost through the tunnel. Stubborn pig-headed. Okay, here is the three-minute elevator ride. Um, so, this is the gunk. How did it come to be? Well, um, a group called Thunderful, um, or Image and Form Games, better known for the um, their... I'm trying to remember the, the name of their other franchise. Uh, Dig World or Steam Dig or Dig Steam? Or, I'm so bad. I'm, I should know the other, their other games, but I just don't play them or run them. Um, I think it's called Steam World, but they're very popular for those games. And they came out with this, kind of like a, a way to build it to like the lore of it. 
How and this guy named Adam the Clever decided to run the game on January 3rd of 2022, where he posted a time of 1 hour, 46 minutes, and 27 seconds. The run, as usual with any beginning run, is very basic, as in it's just beat the game as fast as you can, maybe a little exploits. Well, within five days, by January 8th, he had dropped his time down to a 135.54, finding more skips, they're small, but enough little things to get through to save a little bit of time. Well, this is where I come in and Mr. Double O come in. Have you ever heard that saying where someone in the world is doing the same thing you're doing at the same time? Well, apparently, without we didn't know each other, we've never talked, didn't know each other's existence. On the same day, we both picked up the gunk and started running it. We just had like the same idea. And the thing about that is, though, is we found different paths through the game, such as the beginning of me climbing up the wall. He would go through a cave because he didn't know about the wall clipping. Um, the mines where I didn't know about jumping over the rocks, he knew about this stuff, but we didn't know about each other. So I posted a 125.53, dropping the time by an almost 10 minutes, which was, to me, I was like, wow, this is crazy. It's probably the best it's going to be for a while. You know, I've been sitting here forever finding skips. Well, not even a couple days later, I had dropped the run down to a 119. So after getting a 119, I was like, man, I'm unstoppable. No one's going to come in here and get this time. I'm just killing it. Well, 6 a.m. in the morning, I wake up to a notification from speedrun.com that I had a Sasuke, a rival, somebody who wanted to beat my time. And what did he post? <laughs> he posted a 110.27, mopping my time destroying me. I had no idea what he had done. I was so confused. I was like, how did he save so much time? I thought I had found like everything. And so I watched his run and, di and like dissected it all the way down. And I could not beat his run. And I was like, well, this sucks. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I can't get the movement he's getting. And I was like, well, it's, at least it's only a 110. And I was getting like 111s and 112s. And I was like, at least I'm close. As I was saying that, another notification comes up and he posts a 107. Like the man is just on a roll, just killing it, just finding so many different skips. And I like, I actually got into a stream and started congratulating him on all the skips he was finding because they were insane. Just some things that like you've seen during the run right now that I would have never thought of. Oh, please be there. Well, during that time we decided that we were gonna become like the, the rivals of this game. We were gonna fight each other for the world record. And so we were doing runs and just cutting off like minimal seconds, but weren't happy enough with them to post them. So we would just kind of keep them like hidden away from each other. And then I got a 101, almost a sub one hour. It was so close. I need and I thought there was no way. I dropped another six minutes on the run. There's no way he's gonna catch up to this. And what does this man do? He hides a trick from me called Lower Mind Skip. He hides it from the community. He waits. He gets that sweet sub one hour. Posts a video on YouTube called The Gunk Sub One Hour. And that's how I found out that the Lower Mind Skip existed. And then a couple hours later, speedrun.com updated with a 5943. Shattering my time once again, this man came out of nowhere. And I, I had no idea what to do. So I started grinding and grinding, smashing my face in the walls, touching every piece of grass, touching every wall. Do it, like I tried to do anything anybody could to try to clip over everything. And that's when I started finding out of bounds clips, bomb skips, just easier boss strats, jumping inside the wasteland. I dropped my time to a 57. What was I Sadly, after I posted this time, double O left the community. He completely quit streaming. He doesn't do anything anymore that I'm aware of. But he left a legacy on this game. An absolute legend that he is. So I got a 57. I was super happy. But it was kind of hollow. Like, I had no one else to compete against, and there was no one left. Was that the but instead of letting it get me down, no. No. I decided that no. I wanted to get oh, a 55. Could have been anything. A comet. But instead of getting a 55, I got a 54.52. Oh, 
where the record remains today. And I have not been able to beat that time. I have not been able to keep up with that pace. I don't know even know what I did to get a 54. It was just one of those blessed days where I failed run after run after run after run. And then, bam. It just all came together. And I'm pretty sure that I, like, screamed in my mic. Like, I was, like, shouting, like, congratulations to myself. I'm pretty sure I shed a tear because it was, like, hundreds of hours into this game. And I just did not think I was going to get a 55 after hundreds of runs. And, yeah, that is the that is the world record history of this game and where it stands now. We end up, I think we passed around the world record. I didn't, say about, I didn't name off some of the times. But I think Mr. Double O and I traded off the world record at least, like, seven or eight times in a span of like two months of just constant grinding and going against each other. I miss the guy and I wish he'd come back to streaming and running. He is an absolute legend. He also runs multiple like NES games and old games. Okay, so back to the run. So what I'm doing here in the wasteland is I'm trying to survive to get to a cliffside to get saved to get out of the wasteland. The reason why I chose to explain the world record history during this point of the game is because there's nothing going on. I'm literally just walking in a straight line. So I figured instead of boring you guys and walking in a straight line, I would give you guys a story. So hopefully you guys didn't mind it. Hopefully that was, uh, you know somewhat well put together with the 35 minutes that I had to put that all together. <laughs> it was glorious. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so right here, I'm coming up to this pipe, and I'm going to undo the screws on it, and it's going to unleash this miasma that's going to allow me to bypass what was an invisible wall right here. And now I need to make my way to the moon. Um, once I get up to the cliffside, Ronnie accepts that she's going to die out here and that no one's going to save her as she believes that Bex crashed the ship trying to find her. So early on inside this scene, she says, was that a shooting star? No, wait, was it the dust bunny? It couldn't be. So because of that, you believe that the dust bunny has crashed and something bad has happened. Honestly, nothing bad has happened. Ronnie's just an overthinker and believes the world's going to end right now. So she's trying to make it up here to see if she can find her way back to the campsite. But she collapses when she gets up here. But Bex, being the super trooper that she is, saves you, takes you back to camp, and then this is where you go back on your revenge to go fight the gardener. So when I said that the garden is the last area, it truly is the last area. But... We have to go back to it one more time. And when we go back to it, it's much, much harder. Okay, so cutscene is going to start now. We're going to skip. And now we're going to teleport back. Okay, here we go. Good thing I set a beacon back in the old city. Back to the old city and off to the final part of the game. So this is the final area. I will be fighting the final boss. I'll be doing all the stuff that leads up to the ending. We have a lot of skips here. Once again, between me and uh, Double O, there has been plethora of different route changes, skips that have been found, skips that have been taken out, skips that have been redone. And in this area, I will give Double O the credit of finding some of the most game-breaking skips for the end game possible. Skipping mass majority of the elevators, which I would have never been able to do. Because like his thought process was way different than mine. So all credit to him. There is one skip that I did find that I am pretty proud of in the final part, which is skip, uh, seed skip, where we can actually skip over hitting a seed to grab another seed uh, to use it in a different area. Kind of like earlier, but way easier. So right here's another skip I found. I'm going to stand on the edge of this bridge, and it's going to lure the gunk over here. I'm going to shoot that button, and I'm going to wait. And I'm going to shoot it again. Okay. Or this gunk is actually going to harass me. So the reason why we do that is, as you can see, there's so much gunk right here. If you don't lure them away, they will eat your face off, and it's pretty much instant death. I'm sick and tired of this stuff. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Okay, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. All right. So, um, if you didn't lure this... Okay, so Double O does it blind. He just jumps into the gunk and survives. He's a champ. I lured away from the button, and then I do that. So then there's no conflict with me having any chances of dying or wasting time. Uh, he's a brave soul. I am not. 
I like I, I just screamed because I thought I was gonna die. I was so worried. I was like, well, that kind of sucks. No, it's, it's just an expression here. You like it? All right. So this part, we need to pull three levers to deactivate all of the red laser beams. Well, all the I guess laser grids. Um. I'm in. This allows us access to the parts of the tower when we were first in here that we weren't able to get to. Got this. The thing about this is, though, is a lot of the areas that it opens up are completely useless now because of all the skips that we have found. Almost there. Um, coming up right now, uh, I we have one where we're going to be bypassing a gunk gate that you're supposed to absorb a quite a bit of gunk, but there's like this little wedge in the wall, and I mean the tiniest little wedge, and for some reason Ronnie just like clips through it, but it doesn't look like you should be able to. I still don't know how it works. Okay, right here. We're gonna drop down, enter up in this tunnel. We're gonna get rid of one gunk wall, and then we're gonna skip the second one. Oh, okay. Or she's gonna do some crazy acrobatics off the ledge. Perfect. So here is the skip. There's this gunk right here that you need to start absorbing, but if you just kind of run through it, jump onto this yellow ledge, and then jump against this wall, you just slide straight through. Once again, another good time save. Absorb the gunk. So once all of this gunk is absorbed, we'll be able to leave these windows, accessing the elevator room that you'll probably remember from the last time we were here. But this time, we're not gonna take the elevator because it's covered by gunk. We're going to take a different path. I'm gonna try something right here. Maybe we can get it. Nope, okay. Well, you know, I tried. I didn't waste any time. I just wanna see if I can get it. The camera in this game gets taken over by certain scenarios. Time to plant this thing. Oi. Oi. Love you. Love you. Have a good day at work. The girlfriend's setting off to work. Had to say goodbye to her. <laughs> okay, so this is the skip that I found. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the um, skip that I found. Instead of taking the other seed that's across the hall, I was able to jump on that mushroom that was in that little opening, and it allowed me to grab the seed that you see beside me right now. And we're going to use that to skip this area. As long as these turrets don't blow me to smithereen with their bombs. Okay. So we're just going to throw it in this pool. Perfect. And we completely bypassed the complete bottom floor. That was my contribution to the end game. And there's one more app coming up, which is we skip, a, we skip the boss fight in the middle of the elevator. Okay, so what we're doing is there's five floors that we need to make it up. Each floor has some kind of gunk blocking the elevator, and we need to find ways to get rid of it. Um, as you can see, I had to climb up to this area, and then once I get rid of all the gunk, elevator rises up. The second part is going to be three alien spawners that we need to get rid of, and once they're gone, it'll rise up. We're gonna do this in a certain pattern. I'm gonna stand on this yellow orb, and I'm gonna wait. Once we get up here, I'm gonna absorb this in a certain pattern so the aliens spawn, but they shouldn't have any time to attack me. Well, never mind. He decided to attack me. He immediately attacked after being hatched. He's like, I'm gonna make you eat those words. Okay. Okay, what? Oh my god, I got soft locked into the elevator when they both hit me. I don't know what just happened, but I could not move my character's uh, aimer. Ah! Okay, well that's only 30 seconds. That's not bad. I can't believe that just happened. They put me into the elevator. Okay, anyways, I'm now just gonna kill them because we're not gonna risk that again. Okay, well, that guy is vicious. He wants my blood right now. Usually they're very docile, and they don't go out of their way to attack you too much, but I guess these guys really wanted to prove a point. They were like, don't you ever underestimate us. Okay, so now with this floor cleared, the next one, we're gonna have um, this puzzle that we're supposed to be using our arm to spin these platforms around. 
But if you use, um, and I'm trying to find the platform, trying to find the platform, there it is. Um, if you use the um, environmental clipping technique that we've been using in this game so far, you can actually bypass the area by destroying one plant and not destroying the other one. So we're going to destroy this guy. We're gonna like one, two, three, climb up. Oh, okay, well, I jumped up just... Oh my god, this is not happening. Get me out of there. Okay, I jumped up at the worst time. It was like a millisecond too fast. The mushroom was still on the tilt. So once we're up here, we've bypassed this area. Oh, I'm gonna fall. I jumped way too early. I am butchering the end game. Okay, anyways, I jumped way too early. I was like, for some reason, just in like motor mood to like move. And so I jumped and the mushroom wasn't even spawned yet. Okay, we're now clearing up this area and we're gonna go into the mini boss that's on the elevator. But the thing about the mini bosses is that you don't actually need to fight him. If you position yourself on the elevator to be able to see all three spawners, which I'm pretty sure is this area right here, um, even if it's not, we can still um, get the boss. There's going to be a ball that drops out of the spawners. If you're able to vacuum it up before, it's right here. Um, if you're able to absorb it up before it uh, fully spawns in, you can actually stop the boss from appearing. So there's the boss. He's gone. Okay, there was the boss again. They're gonna constantly try to spawn him in, but as long as you're fast enough, you can despawn him. Okay, he's gone. No boss fight. Moving on to the second to final, second final, second to final floor, or second to last floor, whatever you wanna say. Um, in this area, Double O found a way to skip the entire puzzle. Instead of having to destroy the aliens, um, all the way around the entire circumference of the elevator, you can just destroy one room of the aliens and then just absorb the gunk and it allows you to bypass the room. So we're going to absorb both sides of the room. Then we're going to absorb this area and I'm going to have one alien behind me. Perfect. We're going to jump up here. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. So instead of having to do the whole circumference of the area, like go all the way around and destroying, I think it's like 20 plus aliens. That vine is like the other one from earlier. The hitbox extends much further than what's like actually seen. So you can grab onto it and bypass leading up to the final floor of the game. So in this final floor, it's gonna be a boss fight with a bunch of minions and flying gunk. There is no strat to this as the aliens move around sporadically and the gunk, if you absorb it too quickly at the very beginning when you get up here, you can actually soft lock the, um, the uh, boss and then you can't proceed and you have to reset your checkpoint. So I'm going to wait. That was really good. That was really good. Now we need to look for the opening that leads to the final boss, which is right here. We're gonna let him ram right into this area. Oh, I thought he stopped. He tricked me. I thought he stopped again. He had that weird delay. I don't know what's with me and this guy today. There we go. So once he's destroyed, this will release the wall, and we are now in the final part of the game. As in, like, this is the final fight. We make it up the stairs, and we have to play laser tag with the final boss. There's gonna be four switches we have to hit while evading every enemy that we've seen so far in the game, while he's also shooting lasers at us. And we also have to do it in a certain pattern, otherwise we'll get caught up by the small minions, and we'll just die instantly. So. I'm going to try my best to do this without any hiccups. Okay, come on. Get through, get through, get through, get through. Nice. Almost died. 
Vinyl boss. Let's so the strat with this is I'm going to enter the room and I'm going to master the cutscene and I'm going to try to make it to the very back wall. So on the back of the wall is going to be a um, yellow area that I can touch and it'll start a cutscene and he'll charge up his second laser. When he does that, if your camera is still shaking, you can grab onto the lever and you know that you have enough time to do it without getting shot. So here comes our first lever. So as I'm coming this way, I'm going to try to destroy these aliens. Oh, looks like I missed one, but that's fine. Okay, as long as no aliens attack me, we should be good. This should be the first hit. This is absolutely amazing right now. We've had no issues. Okay, so this is the first hit on the boss. After deactivating the first two switches, we walk up and I'm gonna position myself so when he finishes up, he'll blast me across the room and I'm gonna stand right here and then he'll eradicate the gunk that appears. There comes the next lever, and we got all the enemies destroyed. He's gonna spawn in another enemy, but we're gonna take the left path so we don't run into the bull. So once we get to this left path, there's gonna be two turrets blocking our next lever. One more. Okay, now we just wait. And this should be the final lever. There should be no aliens to destroy us. And time's gonna be coming up in just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna give a countdown. Time is in three, two, one, time. God, that was a really good run. I'm very happy with this. And I got below the 59. Hey! Oh my goodness. Thank you all so much, seriously. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to the staff, the previous and future runners. Um, I can't thank you all enough. Thank you to um, Double O and, you know, I guess I for, I don't know, making this an actual possibility to run this game. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really glad this went as well as it did. I expected a couple hiccups, but this was really, really good. I'm like two, three minutes, a 57.04, whatever. I'm, I'm a few moments off of, uh, like a few minutes off of my world record pace. I don't care. This was absolutely awesome. Thank you again, guys, for having me. Yeah, that was really good. I really enjoyed that story kind of in the middle there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But uh, yeah, where can they find you, by the way? Um, so I go by Song of Soil on Twitch. I don't really use social media. Maybe something I should get into. But you can always find me on Twitch under Song of Soil. I run a plethora of games. Um, I run stuff like Flynn, The Gunk, Chorus. Um, let's see, there's Restless Spirit, Arietta of Spirits, um, Hell Pie. Um, there's just a plethora of games. So if you want to come see like a variety of platformers, adventure games, Metroidvanias, you can come stop on by. Awesome. That that was, yeah, that was a very good run. Definitely, again, thank you for definitely doing that for us. Yes, no, thank you so much. I totally appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to share some more thoughts in the intermission, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to that. No problem. See thank you in you. a moment.